Aisha Burwell, Ariel Agudio, and Alexis Briggs. All three were arraigned on several charges, including assault in the third degree. Burwell and Agudio facing additional charges of falsely reporting an incident. The prosecution citing evidence, most importantly, this CDTA bus video, which they say shows Burwell and Agudio seen here as the real aggressors, not the victims of a racially charged attack, as they once told police. Right now? It was a racially uh, fueled crime. We were three black girls jumped by like 20 white people. That was a frightened sounding Ariel Agudio, who said passengers on the bus used their fists and racial slurs against them. But her tone seems to drastically change when she apparently doesn't realize her call is still being recorded while on hold with a 911 dispatcher. I think it's so funny, though. I feel a boy. Oh. Prior to the release of these 911 calls and the video, there was a rally of support for the UAlbany students. I asked them now what they had to say to those who once supported them. You were very vocal after you said this happened to you. What do you have to say to those who supported you? All the women pleaded not guilty in court today. It was a case that gained national attention and had thousands rallying to support Charlie Rogers, a lesbian who claimed she was a victim of a hate crime. But after nearly a month-long investigation, Lincoln police say Rogers made it all up. One week in jail, two years probation. A Lincoln judge handed her both, plus ordered a comprehensive psychological exam. But he says it still didn't help the community with closure. The people who came out <clears throat> on those dark July nights to hold a candle in one hand and their child's hands child's hand in the other deserve a better explanation. Rogers, though, had nothing to say and showed very little expression on her face during sentencing. Just leave her alone. A far cry from the woman who proclaimed on YouTube she was the victim of a hate crime. The perpetrators of my crime are still out there. She told us and police that three masked men had broken into her home, tied her up with zip ties and carved homophobic slurs on her body. Police say they found her DNA inside the gloves that were supposedly left behind by the suspects. Gloves that they say were also purchased by Rogers, along with a box cutter and zip ties at an Ace Hardware store just a few days before the alleged crime. Police say all her texts from the night of the alleged attack had been deleted and that she posted this on her Facebook wall just days before it all. Quote, I believe way deep inside of me that we can make things better for everyone. I will be the catalyst. I will do what it takes. The judge said if this was an attempt to bring attention to the gay lesbian community, it backfired. Ms. Rogers has single-handedly managed to do a disservice to her cause of enormous proportion. They kept saying things like, get out of this country, you don't belong here, go back to your own country. 18-year-old Yasmin Saweed recounting the ugly attack Thursday night. It was around 10 p.m. when the college student jumped on the 6 train to head home to New Hyde Park when she noticed three young men on the car. It smelled like they were drunk. Mm -hmm. When they approached me, I smelled it and I was like, yeah, they're obviously drunk. And um, before that, they were talking really loud and laughing and... Through my headphones, I heard them say Donald Trump. The Muslim woman says she tried to ignore them, but that was just the beginning of their disgusting assault. They said terrorist, and I was like, okay, like I'm not going to say anything. It's, I'm minding my own business. I don't want to get hurt. And after I didn't respond, they, respond, they came closer, and they, um, they were like, oh, look, it's an effing terrorist right behind my ears. Saweed says the men then grabbed her purse, breaking the strap. I was really scared. I was shaking. So she moved to the other end of the car, but they followed. They were not done. As they got closer, um, they were like, take that rag off your head. One of them reached for my hijab from the back and tried to pull it off, but I put my hand on, my, on top of my head so it wouldn't fall off. Saweed says to add insult to injury, no one defended her. I looked at people, watched me, and they just looked away. And that, that was the part that really hurt. Like, yeah, it sucks. They're Donald Trump supporters. You know, it happens. But I just never expected no one to just stand up and say, hey, guys, cut it out. Police say that a Muslim teen made up a story about being verbally attacked on a New York City subway. Yasmin Saweed claimed that a group of drunk men yelled at her and tried to tear off her hijab. Here you see her in court, her head shaved. It, it turns out that she, in fact, admitted to making up that story in order to get out of a family problem. She's been charged with filing a false report and obstruction.
The FBI was called in to assist after swastikas kept appearing on a message board, similar to a dry erase board on the door of a female student, she is Jewish, who lived in Mitchell Hall. Now the university confirms that a hidden camera placed in the hallway confirmed the student who was the apparent victim did it herself. News 4 spoke to that young woman who asked not to be identified shortly after the hate-filled symbols began appearing on her door. Here's what she had to say at that time. Who does such a thing? I wish I knew. I wish I had any clue who this was, but university police, my house proctor, administrators, nobody can think of a motive of somebody who hates me that much. Through the use of hidden cameras, interviews, and increased police patrols, we have concluded, and through a final interview today, um, investigators have concluded um, that the student who reported the incidents is responsible for the incidents. Now, the university has confirmed that the student, who is a freshman, has admitted responsibility for the swastikas in Mitchell Hall. She faces student judicial action, and she could face possible criminal charges. Three weeks ago, Olander DeShake Huthrell said he and his family barely made it out of their burning home alive. It's absolute anger uh, because, you know, this is, this is my home. This is where my family, my wife and kids, you know, we, this is where we lay our head. And, you know, for somebody to, to violate us like that. Now the 41-year-old Petersburg minister is behind bars. Chesterfield police believe he spray-painted this racial slur on his own home, then set it and his car on fire. The words, kill the gay, written on a lesbian couple's garage door, brought the full weight of the FBI to the investigation of a possible hate crime. This has been brewing. I don't understand why today. Eight months later, the investigation brought law enforcement back to the couple's family home, but this time they came with handcuffs. Did you do this? No. The couple claims they found the hate speech in this noose on their doorstep at their rented condo last October. Back then, she wrote these signs showing her fighting spirit. You know, you get looks of, oh, homos, or, you know, you're going to burn in hell, or, or things of that nature, but kill the gay. I mean, that's a threat against her life. Four months ago, those two women were brought down here to FBI headquarters. They passed through this gate behind me and were taken inside where they were given a test to determine whether or not they had spray paint residue on their palms. They were also given a chance to take a lie detector test, which I'm told they declined. The women say at that point they knew the focus of this investigation had changed from their neighbors to them. Now, because the FBI does not believe this was a federal hate crime, the charges were brought by Arapahoe County. Both women are charged tonight with two counts of criminal mischief and two counts of false reporting. Reporting. What are they trying to do with your faith? I don't know. Can I have some coffee and go to bed? Yeah. It was a downer of an evening for Morton Downey Jr. The controversial TV talk show host had swastikas drawn on his face and shirt, and some of his hair was cut. Downey claims between one and three skinheads attacked him in a bathroom at San Francisco International Airport. He talked to reporters in his hotel room shortly after the alleged incident. Downey told us about it when he returned to his Manhattan apartment. I was pushed inside of a, of, a, of a stall. I never was sat down in the stall. I was leaned up against the stall. I did ask them not to hurt me. Uh, I got, uh, next thing I knew, I was uh, reaching for something blunt that I felt against my face. Uh, they pulled my hand down again. Uh, you know, it's really hard to resurrect it sometimes. Pulled my hand down again, wrote something on my face, and cut my hair off, and then said, now you're one of us, Sig Heil. And they were gone. But some San Francisco airport police and spokesmen don't believe Downey. There uh, has been no substantiation of, uh, of any of the statements that Mr. Downey has made. There were no skinheads to be found in the area. But there's no doubt that this is what happened to you. Pardon me? There's no doubt this is what happened to you. Well, you've heard the story, all right? Now, tonight, Downey told me, told me that he is not sure whether there were one, two, or three attackers in that bathroom. However, earlier today, he told another reporter he's certain that there were three attackers. Anita Matthews didn't like being pulled over for a random breath test five months ago, believing she'd been targeted for wearing a burqa. You are racist because when you just look at me and you see me with any carbon, you could see something happen to you. You couldn't handle it. She didn't like being asked to reveal her face to Senior Constable Paul Fogarty, telling him she wasn't allowed. And accused him five or six times of being a racist, saying to him, you're going to be in trouble, 100%.
She even went to the media with her false accusation. And it actually felt like he actually touched my, my vial and uh, I pulled back. But it was what she did next that landed her in big trouble. She made a formal complaint in a statutory declaration that the officer had acted in a racist manner and had even tried to rip off her veil. Fortunately, it's all there on the patrol car video, or, put more accurately, not there. Thankfully, there was a camera in the back of the car that actually filmed the whole thing, or that officer would be skewered. What makes her story really rich is that in court, her lawyer Stephen Hopper argued it wasn't her who made the false complaint to police. He argued that because she couldn't be seen under her burqa and no one checked her ID, it may not have been her. Magistrate Robert Ravage said the evidence it was her was overwhelming. He sent her to jail for six months. She was out this afternoon on bail and ready to appeal. When a New Jersey waitress said she was stiffed on a tip because of her lifestyle, the sympathy and the cash came pouring in. And that message, I'm sorry, but I cannot tip because I do not agree with your lifestyle and how you live your life. News 4 is one of many media outlets that reported on the former Marines' shocking and offensive story. I sat down with a couple who asked we not show their faces. They told me it was their family who Morales served that night, and their customer copy of the check proves Morales' version of the story doesn't add up. 100% you know that's your check. Yeah, I can actually tell it's my name under the fuzzed out name. In fact, both copies of the check have the same date, time stamp, but the totals are different. The family says they left an $18 tip. They even provided news for their credit card statement showing those charges on their visa. The couple says it's not even their handwriting. And I said, oh my God, they've, she's doctored up our, cop, our check. They just said it's possible you made this up because this isn't their handwriting and this isn't how they left the check. Uh, that's not my handwriting. I don't know. Again, I don't know. Tonight, we talked to Morales, who's sticking with her story and says she's certain she wasn't tipped. Do you see why they're upset? I, I guess. I mean, I'm sure. Now, the family believes this may have, what may have happened is that this was just triggered by a misunderstanding. The family says they were told their server's name was Dan, not Dana. Dana did say that. The family called her Dan and says she was offended and reported it to managers. We have breaking news just in on a story that we brought to you earlier tonight. We told you about a 20-year-old Louisiana woman who claimed to have been attacked and set on fire by three men. Police just announced that the story was fabricated and that the burns were self-inflicted. Sharmika Moffat told police that she was walking through a park when she was attacked. She said that a group of three men wrote the initials KKK and a racial slur on the hood of her car. That police revealed that it was a self-inflicted cigarette lighter and a charcoal starter was recovered with her fingerprints on the bottle and that evidence was confirmed by a state police crime lab. So that's probably the evidence that told them that it was a fabrication. And the Jewish man claiming someone spray-painted swastikas on his house finds himself in jail. Schenectady police say 54-year-old Andrew King spray-painted those swastikas on his own Chillswell Street home. King originally claimed someone targeted him with hateful messages, but police say that isn't true. Police say they charged him only after arresting him for harassment stemming from an incident last month. They say he threatened someone. He is in now the Schenectady County lockup awaiting arraignment. After one of the most wonderful weekends at VidCon, we went out to a gay club to celebrate. And towards the end of the evening, I was separated from my friends and beaten up by three guys. The authorities should have been there to help and protect me, but instead, they treated me like a second-class citizen. With three broken teeth and six stitches in my forehead, I've never felt so terrified to be a gay man in the public eye. Responding deputies were unable to substantiate the assault. Mr. McSwiggin, who had no visible injuries, was subsequently arrested after deputies observed him vandalizing a car in the 8900 block of Santa Monica Boulevard. After being booked and photographed, Mr. McSwiggin was placed into a cell by himself at West Hollywood Station. Mr. McSwiggin was then observed injuring himself with the handle and receiver of a payphone inside the cell. Medical personnel were summoned and Mr. McSwiggin was transported to a local hospital for treatment. Mr. McSwiggin's booking photo was taken prior to deputies seeing Mr. McSwiggin injuring himself. That booking photo is attached. So there he is, looking perfectly fine, and then taking a look once again at his Instagram post shows him totally fucked up. But today we got our update, and surprise, surprise, Callum McSwiggin was found guilty of a felony.
A police officer now stands guard over school children at an Ocean Parkway yeshiva defaced by hurtful and offensive symbols of hate. And a couple of blocks away, another swastika spray painted on the wall of this apartment building. A third symbol defaced the garage door on the Miltz family property. The disturbing discoveries were made Saturday night. Then Sunday evening, a couple in this neighborhood returned home to find a message on their voicemail, threatening repeatedly to kill all Jews. Police have made an arrest in four previous anti-Semitic phone threat messages. Under arrest is 56-year-old David Haddad. He is Jewish, according to police. He's charged with harassment as a hate crime. Now, also, police say that he's a relative of one of the victims and knows another. My sources say he's also the prime suspect in these most recent Midwood incidents. Uh, another historically black uh, church in Mississippi was set on fire. That's the Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church. It was early today, and in addition to being set on fire, it also had Vote Trump spray painted on it in big letters. So there well, it could be a Democrat. It. it could be a liberal. You don't know. Could be you a don't liberal. know. Could be Black Lives Matter. Uh, per perhaps not. So you see there the fire damage, you also see the spray paint. I think we have a close-up as well in case uh, maybe you don't have your contacts in. Yes, vote Trump. A very clear political message there. Now, uh, this black shirt gets burned down again. Are we calling him terrorists? Are we c covering it nonstop? No, this is the last you'll ever hear of this. Less than two weeks before the general election, there was a church in Mississippi that was set on fire. But now we know who set the church on fire. It was a man by the name of Andrew McClinton uh, from Greenville, Mississippi, and uh, apparently he is one of the parishioners at the church. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I, yeah.